Preface of The Bridge of History Over the Gulf of Time. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by T. Zeger. The Bridge of History Over the Gulf of Time A Popular View of the Historical Evidence for the Truth of Christianity by Thomas Cooper. Preface Within these fourteen years, I have spoken the contents of this book, sometimes in the form of a summary, as one long lecture, at other times more completely, as several lectures, in all the large towns and in many of the other towns and villages of England, Scotland, and Wales, but they are now written for the first time. I have written them at the urgent request of hundreds of my hearers, who assure me they wish to see in print what they have listened to with gratification. In putting my spoken words into writing, I have thought it better to preserve the tone of familiarity, the iteration, the colloquialism, the lively interrogative, in brief, all that marks the manner and method of the popular lecturer, who, if he would be successful, must practice every art of address in order to lead his hearers to think. And I trust that the light thoughts here printed may lead light readers to take up my book and read, until they feel so much attracted by the important evidence it treats that they determine to enter without delay on a full and complete study of it in Paley and Horn and Lardner, as well as in the valuable contributions to the evidences by Brook Foss Westcott and other excellent writers of our times. I may be allowed to add that the historical evidence has only formed a part of my work as a lecturer during these last fourteen years. The miracles, the resurrection, the perfect moral teaching, and the unique excellence of the character of Christ have also been repeatedly taken up and treated in my lectures. And being deeply aware of the tendency to aesthetic questioning in our day, I have also dealt with the arguments for natural as well as revealed religion. Thus, I have treated familiarly, and in popular terms, not only the design argument so finely expounded by Paley, but also the argument a priori, now, at length, after all the partial successes of Clark and Howe and Locke and a host of lesser names so perfectly and irrefutably established by my highly intelligent friend, Mr. Gillespie. The argument for God's existence from the fact of our own moral nature, the arguments against materialism and for a future state of rewards and punishments, have had also to be taken up and treated with such poor ability as I possess in order to complete the full course of evidence. If the sample of my lecturing, which I now publish, meets with acceptance, I may try to put the rest, all is yet only spoken, into writing for publication. Thomas Cooper, July, 1871